Russia's invasion of Ukraine is forcing its neighbor Finland to rush toward the embrace of NATO and the U.S. Just one month after joining NATO, Finland hosting its new allies for war games, learning how to fight together and sending a clear message to Moscow. Finland's foreign minister telling NBC News that these days her country has almost no relationship with Russia. You can't have a normal relationship with a country that is actively waging a war, not complying with international law. But it wasn't always like this. For years, Finland and Sweden, just like Switzerland, prided themselves on neutrality, steering clear of conflicts between major powers. But look what's happened since Russia invaded Ukraine last year. Russia's border with NATO countries more than doubled. NATO's territory set to expand by more than 300,000 square miles, including Sweden. The U.S. troop presence in Europe surged to 100,000 for the first time in decades, with 40,000 NATO troops deployed to Russia's doorstep. And Russia's neighbors increasingly convinced that Moscow was a threat not just to Ukraine but to them. It's really incredible how public opinion has changed. You know, when you look at Sweden and Finland, they were like 25% over decades in favor of NATO membership. Mm -hmm. With Russia's aggression, public opinion has changed. 80% Finland and, and um, uh, Sweden are now in favor of NATO membership. Finland was invaded by the former Soviet Union back in 1939. But for decades, its 830-mile border with Russia has been calm. These days, the signs of a growing rupture are everywhere. Beyond hosting those military exercises, both on land and in air, Moscow and Helsinki are kicking out each other's diplomats, Russia shutting down Finland's consulate in St. Petersburg. Visits between their militaries designed to build trust now canceled. In southeast Finland, a statue of revolutionary leader Vladimir Lenin dismantled, while Finland begins building a border fence and tightening rules on Russian citizens crossing the border. How tense is the situation now on the Russia-Finland border? We have always had this long border with Russia and unfortunately we have also been in a situation where we have had to defend our country against a Russian invasion. We are not concerned. We are prepared. Josh Letterman is joining us now. And Josh, it is a reminder that the last thing Vladimir Putin wants is more NATO presence in his backyard. You know, it, it comes as we are getting a, a, an interesting look at the Russian military and some of its top brass. You've got these three Russian generals, one killed in an airstrike in Ukraine, another possibly assassinated while out for a jog, and some Russian officials describing a third who basically disappeared after last month's mutiny as taking a rest, taking a nap. I mean, what does this tell us right now about the top ranks of the military in Russia? Well, Holly, the best Kremlinologists in the world, including, to be sure, those at Russia House at the CAA, are trying to get to the bottom of that very question. The one thing we can say with certainty is that it appears there is a whole lot of tumult going on behind the scenes within uh, Russia's government and the top ranks of its military. And as far as uh, General Surovakin, that guy that you saw on the left-hand side of the screen, who was the general running Russia's operations in Ukraine at the beginning of the war, uh, he was then taken out. Out of that role. He is the one that a Russian lawmaker has said uh, is unavailable right now because he's taking a rest before sure. that lawmaker ran away from reporters. Uh, we know that he is someone that has been reported to have known in advance uh, about Prigozhin, the leader of Wagner's plans to mount that armed rebellion against President Putin. And I asked a NATO official here in Vilnius yesterday, what do you guys really know right now about what is mm. going on in Russia yeah. and specifically with Prigozhin and the Wagner group? And he said, look, Look, we can't tell you where Prigozhin is right now. We don't know whether that deal for him to go to Belarus fell apart or just was never what it was described to be in the first place. They are trying to learn, just like we are, what exactly is going on uh, within the Russian power structure right now. But he said the one thing they do know is there is no love lost right now between the Russian military generals and the leaders of the Wagner group. And so the fact uh, that these two groups are going to be essentially, apparently, yeah. according to Putin, combined into one. The Wagner group brought under the control of the Russian military does not bode well, according to this NATO yes. official, for the effectiveness of the Russian military going forward.